talking about the neoclassical idea and we just mentioned about the triple bottom line and the balanced scorecard ideas and we just introduced the idea that we are going to study in the class which is the stakeholder management. Okay. So we said there was a weakness in the neoclassical model in that if we think just about short term profits we can make a financial mistake Right? It might not be good financially, but more than that, it, sometimes we can have the problem with people's rights, okay? damaging the environment, going against people's rights, that kind of thing. So there should be a better model than a neoclassical model. So we're going to suggest the stakeholder management model. So this is going to be a framework. It's a practical. Do you understand the word practical? It's a framework that helps us to make practical decisions. So, it's more practical than theory, right? So, for example, we could be in a, in a, comp a steel company, which is very different than a very small, let's say, shop. Massive steel company in a shop. They have very different problems about the environment, right? About different things. So we're just learning kind of a framework. And then we have to fill in all the details in the specific case, if we're a shop or a steel factory. Okay? So stakeholder management is a framework. So a key word in stakeholder management is stakeholder. Okay? So stakeholder is somebody who has an interest in an organization or a claim or connected to the organization. <coughs> so uh, we saw in the last class briefly some stakeholders. So we saw stakeholder, suppliers, society, government, creditors, shareholders, customers, owners, managers, employees. These are all stakeholders of a company. So inside these groups, this is just very vague. We can have different groups inside these groups. Okay? For example, society is very wide. Society, we can have the local community, people who live around the company, right? We can have people in the foreign countries, even are affected sometimes by pollution, okay? Uh, <coughs> customers, we can have different types of customers, different types of shareholders. For example, the shareholder who just buys our stock, stock just for one day, just a trader just buying and selling the stock to make a profit, okay? Or we can have a shareholder who's holding our stock for a long time. So these are all stakeholders. And then inside the group, they, we can get some more specific groups, okay? This is like a big, uh, wide group here. So the idea of stakeholder management is by uh, doing what is best for all of the stakeholders, balancing all the interest, we can use the word balance, balance the interest of all the stakeholders and the company together, then we can make the best decisions for both the company. This is how to link social welfare and profits, okay? According to stakeholder management. Company wants to make a profit, but also wants to keep these people happy, okay? Keep all these people happy. So well, this is kind of idea, started in the 70s or 80s. So in the 60s, nobody used the word stakeholder, right? But nowadays, stakeholders very commonly use the word in management and in companies. Okay, so if you work, you should understand stakeholder. Okay. So uh, nowadays. This is seen as essential for long-term company value, production, and success. So this is a quote uh, from William George. Serving all your st stakeholders is the best way to produce long-term results. Do you understand serving? Serving, helping them, okay? 
uh, and create a growing, prosperous company. So prosperous makes a profit. There is no conflict between servicing all your stakeholders and providing excellent returns for shareholders. So servicing means keeping happy all our stakeholders and at the same time making profits for the company. In the long term, it is impossible to have one without the other, right? Maybe in the short term, we could make a lot of profit, but we damage the environment, we pay very low salary to our workers, we give the customers a low quality product, okay? We save money, do you understand? And make a big profit in the short term. But in the long term, of course, the customers are not going to buy our product again, right? There could be some demonstration we're damaging the environment, people might boycott our product, okay? We use the child workers, under age worker, to make the products. Again, we can have some boycott, people won't buy our product. So he's saying here that these things go together. We, we need to keep our stakeholders happy, help our stakeholders, and then we can have long-term success. Does that make sense? If we don't keep our stakeholders happy, can we be successful in the long term? No, why not? Why, we, why don't we just don't care about our stakeholders and just make profit? <coughs> why won't that work in the long term? Hmm? The companies operate in the real world, right? They need people to be their customers, to make profit. So people might decide, not to buy their product. <coughs> so, uh, like we said, we are going to learn just a general guideline which we can fit later to a specific industry. So the first step is pro to properly identify the stakeholders of a company. Who are the stakeholders of our company? So a stakeholder is definition, any individual or group whose claim on a firm's activity can promote or inhibit company value creation and ultimately company success. <clears throat> so we're going to look at some claims later so we can understand better about the claim. Okay? So we want the company to do something. Okay? For example, we're an NGO. We want the company to make a clean environment. Okay? And this claim can promote or inhibit, inhibit means stop, company value. So as the NGO, if the company does what we want, then maybe we'll say this is a nice company and the company can be more valuable. If the company doesn't make the safe environment, we can make a campaign, a protest. Do you understand protest? How do you say protest in Korean? Protest? People are not happy about something, they organize a demonstration or protest. Hangi? So you, they could, NGO could make a protest, okay? And the company could be damaged or inhibit the value. So in that case, the NGO has a claim on the activity. They want them to make a safe environment. And they can uh, do something which can affect the company and affect the company's success. So that's the definition of a stakeholder. Do you have any question about that? No? <clears throat> so, we're going to look at this in a, in a minute. Okay? Uh, we have the different stakeholders here, shareholders, employees, customers, suppliers, communities, governments. So managers must identify the specific stakeholders. Okay? Are they short-term or long-term shareholders? Inside the stakeholders, we have shareholders. And as we said, there can be very different types of shareholders. Right? So then each different group makes a different kind of claim on the company. Import employees claim wages. For example, they have different wages, right? What other things do employees want? Claim is like want. What do employees want? What do you want if you're working for a company? Working environment. Working environment like what? Yes. Hmm? What kind of working environment do you want? More comfortable. Like what? 
safety. Safe, safety, yes. Right. Do you want a pool table? In Google, they have pool tables in Facebook. Big, comfortable sofas you can sit down on. Do you want those kinds of things? Yeah, that's an example, right? What else do employees want? High wage, we already said here. What else? Hmm? Incentives. Incentives. Anything else? Vacation. Vacation time. Right? Shareholders. Shareholders are mainly interested in financial return. Activist groups, NGOs, they are worried about the global warming. Are you worried about global warming? Hmm? Do you buy do you care if the company is a nice company who's not damaging the environment or you don't care? Don't care, they can damage the environment if they want. Hmm? No? So <coughs> these kind of groups are especially worried about that. So we have to fill in the stakeholder groups and the claims. So we make this kind of thing, right? Who is the stakeholder? What are their claims? Here we can see employees. They want to be respected. They want the wages. Equal treatment and non-discrimination. Okay? Should I discriminate? I'm going to promote you because you're a woman and you're a man. I don't like you, so because you're a man. Right? No promotion. Okay? Discrimination. Health and safe working conditions. Job security, don't get fired. Participation. I want to be able to participate in the company. Okay? That they respect my opinion. Listen to me. Okay? Uh, meaningful work. Meaningful work means they give you something meaningful to do. You don't want to go to work and they say to you, well, actually, we don't have much work these days, so just sit there and just do whatever you want. Right? Would you be okay if they said that? In your work? Right? People want to feel like they're doing something meaningful. Privacy? Right? Can they say, hey, give me your medical record. I want to see your medical record. Right? No, they can't say those kind of things. Right? So, we get an idea of the claims. Right? So, we identify the claims of the employees. So in principle, if we can meet their claims, it's add va it adds values to the company. So if we have a happier employee, are they going to work better or, or work worse? <coughs> better, right? They'll do a better job. So we should add value to the company. So we should make a process to make sure that we're doing that. So for example, if we don't pay our suppliers on time, our supplier might not be happy, and they might make a lower quality product. Okay, So we need to make a process, like checking, two or three people are checking that we are paying the supplier on time, or use the IT system. If I didn't pay my supplier, there's an alarm, right? Something like that. <laughs> so it also adds social capital. Social capital is a cap capability that arises from the prevalence of trust in a society or in certain parts of it. If people who work together in an enterprise trust one another because they are all doing the same, they all have the same ethical norms, doing business costs less. So if you trust me and I trust you, then we have social capital. Okay? Example of that is uh, Warren Buffet made some deal with Walmart. Warren Buffet is an investor. So he made a deal with Walmart. And because he trusts Walmart, he's, he, they just shook hands on the deal. Do you understand to shake hands? Okay. Now if they didn't trust each other, then they have to pay a lot of money to lawyers and accountants. Okay. Do you understand lawyers and accountants? Do you want to be a lawyer or an accountant? Well paid jobs. Hmm? So they have to pay a lot of money to the law. He doesn't trust Walmart, so he's going to get his lawyers to make a big contract, 10,000 pages. Okay? Costs him $1 million. He needs to pay all the accountants to check everything in detail. Okay? All the things.
things that Walmart told him. Check again with the accountant. Takes a lot of time and money. But if I just trust each other, shake hands, finished, saved two million dollars. Do you understand that idea? That is called social capital. We don't have to protect ourselves with the complicated contract or legal agreement. Okay? Why? Because we all we trust each other. Why? Because he has a good reputation, right? He's been doing business publicly for 20 years, and maybe he never cheated anybody. Do you understand? So he has the reputation. So the company trusts him. And he trusts the company also have the reputation. So if they did some bad activity, then they're going to get some bad publicity about that. Okay? So the same in the company. Uh, if, the com if the company meets my claims as an employee, then we can trust each other more. Okay? I'm not going to make some legal case against the employee. They're not going to make a legal case against me. Right? This is a social capital. So the reason they call it capital, capital is like has value. This is something which adds value to the company. We can always make a money value for this. In this case, we could say social capital was equals to $2 million, right? So we can give a number. That's why they call it capital. It's almost like a money, money value by trusting each other. <clears throat> but we have to remember that sometimes the stakeholders don't even make a claim because they don't know they, what's good for them sometimes. Right? Do people always know what's good for them? Or sometimes you need other people's suggestion. Do you always know what's good for you? No? You need a suggestion from other people? Right? So for example, uh, <coughs> we have some supplier, and our supplier has a very bad IT system. Right? So the supplier's IT system is very bad. But we have a very good IT system, okay? The supplier didn't ask us to help them to make a new IT system. They didn't ask us, right? But we can see supplier needs a new IT system. So we tell the supplier, right? So the company, the supplier doesn't ask. They don't know, right? Doesn't ask. But anyway, the company gives them the IT system and improves the supplier. Is the supplier happier? Or not happier? Supplier, happier or not happier? Okay. Happier, the company helped them with a new system, right? Yeah. They're happy. Did they ask for that? No. No, okay, so they don't have to ask sometimes. We can guess the claim or help the other person, right? It doesn't have to be that they asked us. So we can look, when we make this list of claims, for example, suppliers, right? It doesn't have to be that they tell us that uh, we want a workable lead time. Workable lead time means you need to tell us at least two weeks before if you want a new product. Okay, lead time, time before we deliver. Okay, I can't tell my supplier I need the product the next day, tomorrow. Quick, do it. Right, I need it tomorrow. Okay, so maybe they didn't tell us that, but we know that we should give them enough notice. Okay? So when we're making the claims, it's not just what the, the stakeholder asks us, but also we decide what's good for the stakeholders, what we think is good for the stakeholders. Okay? So another example, improving workplace health and safety or educating employees can boost our performance. So the employees don't ask anything about health and safety, but we make better health and safety, they feel happier, they perform better, right? They don't ask for education, but we give them some education, they develop their ability, and they perform better. So let's look at uh, some of the, we already looked at employees, right? So we can look here at the value creation. Do you understand value creation? company's value is, market value is the stock price, right? 
multiplied by the number of stock. Uh, but basically, value means the, the worth of the company. So we want to create value, and, as well as keeping our shareholders happy. So if we increase employee productivity, it creates value. Employees are more productive. Why do you think Google and Facebook have pool tables and very comfortable sofas in their workplace? Productivity. Why? Why does that increase productivity? Because many employers are more comfortable, like they begin to make some people think creative, mm -hmm. so they directly connect to more education. Right. Yes, so if you're happier and you have a space where you can think creatively, okay, you get some downtime, some break time. Okay, they went a little bit too far in one company. They made the beds for the employees. But they found out making the beds doesn't increase productivity because people just slept for too long, right? So beds is going too far, right? They installed the beds and they actually tested the productivity. But they found that the people slept for too long. Instead, they're supposed to sleep for 20 minutes, but they slept for one hour, an hour and a half. And then when they woke up, they were a little bit groggy, so they weren't working very well. So they stopped the beds, right? Or maybe something like playing pool. You understand pool? Do you play pool? It's called pocketball in Korea. Do you play pocketball? No. Or billiards? In Korea, they play billiards. Do you guys play billiards every Friday night? You go and get your thing and put on and drink with Matthew and play with her? No? Why not? It's fun. Huh? Why not? Don't like billiards? Just men in Korea play billiards usually? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, if we do that, then we can take a break from our work for 20 minutes, walk around, the blood flow, the oxygen increase, right? You can have a great idea while you're playing billiards. Oh, I have a new idea. Why don't I do that? Go around the billiard. Right? Start writing about your new idea, right? So we can increase the productivity and efficiency and quality. It also helps us to keep the, the workers, right? You get headhunted by another company. You're working for Google and Facebook headhunts you. They want you to work. They say, we'll offer you a lot of money in a big house. And you say, no, I really like billiards. So I'm staying with Google. I can play billiards. Can I play billiards at Facebook? No, no billiards. OK, I'm staying at Google. All right? So if we're happy and feel comfortable in our company, then we can stay in the company. So this is not such a big problem in Asia, because in Asia, people in the culture, they have a little bit more loyalty to the company. Especially in Japan, they have the salary man who works for the same company for 30 years, right? But in the US and the UK, people tend to change their company very easily. They get another offer. So keeping the staff is an important point for companies, okay? Uh, we can have a dynamic and innovative workplace. Okay, we can get positive media coverage. Even though the media uh, is not strictly a stakeholder, they can affect our, they can do the second part, right? If we look at the definition of a st stakeholder uh, back here, uh, so the media doesn't really have a claim on the firm activities. The media doesn't really want the firm to do something or not to do something, right? But the media in the second part, it can promote or inhibit company value. So the media, by giving some positive story or negative story about the company, can make positive value or negative value. How do you say media in Korean? Orun, something like that? Orun. So we can say that's for employees. We also have shareholders, customers, okay? We'll talk a little bit more about these things later, like this kind of one of non-discrimination. This is like a fundamental right. Do you understand right? Human rights? How do you say human rights? Inguan what? Inguan, that's all? Human rights. So, I mean, if we were just thinking about profits, 
Maybe that's not good for human rights, okay? We're going to get all of the 12-year-old children in India to make our shoes because it's really cheap. We can make more profit. What do you think? It's a good idea for making more profit? Hire all the 12-year-old children in India? We can pay them very low wages. Hmm? How about paying women less? We can make more profit. Hire women to do the same job and pay them a lower salary. Huh? What it makes more profit? Right, but it's against the rights, the human rights. Okay? So if we just think of the neoclassical model, that's a big failing, right? So in stakeholder management, we're going to especially think about people's rights. Okay? So discrimination is one right. Uh, we can just look down at the types of claims here. Uh, for shareholders, mainly it's return on investment, but also they want transparency. You understand transparency? Transparency means that you can see everything. Okay? Honest reporting. Okay? Customers want product safety. We saw in the case of the Fiat Pinto, that was the problem. Or the Ford Pinto, the card wasn't safe. Quality products. They want uh, no false advertising. They, nowadays, they want the companies to... Some people said they didn't care, but... Let's see, how many people care whether the company is good for the environment or not? Let's have a show of hands. I care that the company helps the environment. Hands up. You care if the company helps the environment. Mm, okay, I don't care if the company helps the environment. Okay, try again. Everybody has to put up their hand. I care the company helps the environment. Hands up. I don't care the company helps the environment. Okay, so we still have two people who don't really care whether the company is helping the environment or not, but maybe 90% of the people these days are worried about also that kind of thing. Okay. Uh, suppliers. They want the fair procurement practices, that means no bribery, right? So you're my supplier and you're my supplier, but you tell me I'll put one million dollars into your personal account in Switzerland if you choose me, and I, that's bribery, okay? And I say, okay, I'll choose you. Put the money into the account in Switzerland, not in my name, in a trust, and I'm not going to use it, it's going to be for my children to go to university in Switzerland after 20 years. So nobody will remember, right? That's the kind of sophisticated bribery they do these days. It's not as obvious as just giving the money, right? They're going to put the money away somewhere and they're not going to use it for 10 years. Or maybe their children will use it after 20 years, right? So otherwise they are going to get caught these days. The, they're catching up on the, that kind of thing, right? They want a fair procurement practice, on time payment, workable lead times, help them with their management system, help them with their technology and knowledge. If I help my supplier to improve their technology, that's going to help me. Okay? Uh, communities want environmental responsibility, economic development. Community wants the company to create jobs, right? Companies can also help the community most politicians are mainly worried about getting jobs for their community. That's their number one thing, right? So that's the number one sales factor for companies when they go to a new town or village. We're creating jobs, developing the economy. Governments, they want them to keep the laws. Competitors want a fair play. So these are, are some claims. So let's just uh, pause here for a second to ask a question, or discuss a question. So, who is a stakeholder of a company? Okay, the first question. So we can talk about the stakeholder of a company and maybe we can give an example of their claims. So just give an example of some stakeholders and their claims. A claim from a stakeholder. One stakeholder and a kind of claim they would have. So discuss with your partner. So 
exciting. I mentioned in the last class that in this class we are going to be doing pair discussions during the class. It means when you come to the class, you need to sit next to another student. If there is, it may be an odd number of students, that means we just have one student sitting by themselves who makes a group of three. Okay? Well, apart from that, try to sit next to the other students so you can discuss with the other students. Okay? There we have an even number. Jelly, is that your surname or your first name? Ezra is my first name. Okay. Can you tell me a stakeholder and their claim? So can you give me an example? Uh, creditors, directors. So creditors, uh, what's a claim of creditors? What kind of claim do creditors have? What do creditors want? What do creditors want from the company? Do you understand creditors? Creditors are people who lend money to the company. So if I lend money to the company, what do I want the company to do? You don't want a default, right? Yes. You want them to pay back the money to you. You lent them money, you want them to pay back. Okay, uh, then uh, Francesca, can you give another example? Uh, employees, mm -hmm. government, and... Just one, what do employees want? In the stakeholder? Mm -hmm. uh, safety, like we said earlier, uh, they want safety, privacy, and respect. 
and okay, then uh, Sadhu. Uh, claims. Another example of a stakeholder and a claim? Yes. Uh, first of all, we have two types of stakeholders, internal and external. For mm. example, uh, for example, uh, employees claims. Uh, okay, so she said employees, so different. Um, yeah. Uh, for example, uh, shareholders. Claims. What, what claims do shareholders have? Yes. Uh, they. Um, uh, they want uh, they uh, how to say uh, they worry about the uh, company's um, um, activities and uh, maybe um, for example uh, shareholder have uh, has uh, their own uh, share in this company and uh, they are worried about activities because it. Uh, it can um, influence on their uh, on shareholders and uh, what kind of influence? Um, it, it may uh, it may it might um, it might damage or may or damage what? <laughs> Profit, right? Yes. Shareholders are worried about money and profit, right? Yes. So if the company doesn't do well, yeah. they, so they want the company's activities to be profitable. Yes. So they can make profits. <coughs> okay, so we can look back over here again uh, later. We can look back at uh, each stakeholder and their claims, right? Also, as we mentioned in the book, we are, this is in chapter one, so it's a good idea to read the book. It explains about from the stakeholder part, right? It's not too long, so we can see it explains about the stakeholders, and we can see this information in the book, right? So it helps to read the book as well to understand about that. Uh, okay, so that's the first step. First step, identify the stakeholder and identify their claims. Do you understand identify? Find. Find the stakeholders. Who are they? And what are their claims? What do they? <coughs> what do they want? What's good for them? Okay, and we make a list of those things. Okay, second step. We want to find our mutual stakeholder and help them to achieve or improve themselves. So mutual in English means together, like together. So we could, like me and my wife, we could have a mutual bank account. We have the bank account together, okay? So mutual stakeholders have a shared or joint interest in company success. So developing their capabilities help drive company success. So shareholders are mutual stakeholders because the company is more successful, they are more successful. Okay? Employees, company is more successful, they are more successful. Suppliers, company is more successful, customers. Okay? But government is not mutual. Okay? The company is more successful, doesn't really, government is over a, a large country, right? So it doesn't make that much of a difference to the government, right? Uh, the NGOs, company is more successful, it doesn't really affect the NGO. So NGO is not a mutual stakeholder. So a mutual stakeholder is somebody, it's like you're on the same team. Do you understand? We're on the same team. Okay? And if the company does well, I do well. Okay? So we are mutual stakeholders. Everybody understand a mutual stakeholder? Okay? So we want to improve what they can achieve, maybe, for example, through education. If we improve the education of our employees, then they can achieve more, and then our company can, can achieve more. Okay. So in order to generate valuable outcomes, and mutually, together, drive the company success. 
So this is the second step. Well, let's look at some examples. So we, we gave a negative example of forward earlier on, so we can give some positive example now, right? So forward works with suppliers and industry partners to encourage the development and implementation of environmental management systems. Environmental management system is a way of managing your company to make sure that you're not damaging the environment. Okay? For example, are we measuring the CO2? Do you understand to measure? How do you say measure in Korean? Okay, so measure the CO2, that's one of the part of the environmental management system. Okay? So it works with its suppliers and industry partners. What does that mean? Other industry who is an industry partner of Ford? Who else is in the same industry? Chrysler. BMW. Okay, so it works together with the industry partners and with its suppliers to share information about the environmental management system. Well, what are you doing? Oh, you're measuring your CO2. How did you reduce your CO2 last year? Okay. Oh, uh, we stopped using the company airplane and instead we flew in the economy class. We sold the company airplane. Oh, that's a good idea. So we are going to sell our company airplane. Anyway, the CEO doesn't need an airplane. He can save money by flying in economy, right? So they meet together with their suppliers, and Ford is going to discuss and try to develop a better environmental management system. Okay? So it's working together with its competition, competition, and with the suppliers, helping the suppliers to improve those things. Other things, uh, life cycle product and tooling analysis. So help them to make the product, environmental modeling, other sustainability management tools. So these are new things. Maybe my supplier is a small supplier just making some part of the car. They don't know about this, right? So I'm forward, so I'm going to educate them. Okay, you need to do this, and you need to do this, and you need to do this, right? And then they improve their performance, and then we improve our performance. So more examples is uh, Capital One is a financial institute. They make some free seminar for their customers for financial literacy. Do you ever read? Do you ever read some agreement on the credit card? People don't understand, right? It's in a lot of financial words. Uh, some students studied financial management. Was that challenging? The vocabulary, financial vocabulary, is challenging for you? You're not an English speaker? Even for English speakers, it's challenging. They don't understand the financial words, right? So they, they teach the customers the financial words so that they can understand better about the product. Because some people, because they don't understand the credit card, they buy a lot of things with the credit card, and then they end up paying 20% interest or 40% interest, a lot of interest, because they didn't understand. So they're helping their customers to understand better. Deutsche Bank, they're doing community arts, so helping uh, music and educational programs in the local communities. So uh, here we can see promoting mutual stakeholder capabilities. Okay? So <coughs> we can have different principles here, like for example, Promote physical and emotional well-being and security. Okay? Working in a healthy and safe workplace increases productivity and efficiency. So we establish some process right, to eliminate physical and mental abuse, create a better environment in the workplace. With who do we work with? We work with communities and our suppliers. Okay, so maybe we have a healthy and safe workplace, but our supplier doesn't have a healthy and safe workplace. Okay, so we want to teach our supplier to have a healthier and safer workplace. Then, 
the supplier's employees will do a better job. If the supplier's employees do a better job, then we can get a better product from the suppliers. For example, we're Ford, and our supplier is making tires. Do you understand tire? Right? So if they make a better tire, it's better for our car. So we have, again, different examples here. So all of these things we want to do in our company, and we also want to help in, in our employees, with our suppliers, with our customers. Okay? Promoting education. Promoting education is very wide. Almost everybody is helped by the education. Customers, okay? the suppliers, the employees, are all our mutual, even our shareholders can be helped by education. Because if the shareholder knows more about how the company works, uh, they can make a better uh, decision in the AGM and that kind of thing. So uh, here is, we can encourage and reward employee educational advancements. So for example, we make, here it really is making the system to help this. So we want to help our education of our employees. So we make some education, online education system, right? If my employee wants to go to the English Hub one, I'm going to pay 50%, okay, of the fee. If they pass the TOEIC exam by a lot of points, they can get some bonus payment. Okay, like Begman 1, right? Give them Begman 1. So we make the system. Do you understand the system? We make the kind of system to promote these things. Okay, so we saw the example in the community, even the financial literacy. literacy. <coughs> Here we have constructive play, something we talked about in, in Google and Facebook. Play, do you like playing? Do you like playing? What games do you like playing? <coughs> what games did you play in, in elementary school? Mm. What games do you like playing? Online. Just on, everybody in Korea, just online games? <laughs> so if I work in a Korean company, I should have some online gaming room for the employees to play online games for 20 minutes? Hmm? Any other games you like? If you were in the company, what kind of game would you like to play for a break, having a break? Hi, bye, bo. <laughs> Say hi, bye, bo for 20 minutes with your friend. Hmm? What games do Korean people like? Americans, they like ping pong and billiards, board games, you know, board game, chess. Do you like chess? No? Do you like Baddock? Do you play Baddock? <laughs> no? Hmm? Only Candy Crush kind of game? <laughs> hmm? League of Legends? Can any Korean person suggest one game apart from online game? Please? Korean students suggest a game that Korean people do that's not an online game? Hmm? Bowling? Okay, so some companies have you can make a bowling lane, right? So play is a positive feature of organization and culture. Play encourages employee satisfaction. Employees are happier. Keep them. And play can lead to innovation. Okay? Because we're playing, we're moving about, and maybe the blood flow is increased the oxygen, and we can discuss with the people when we're playing, can help our cre creativity. So we need to find ways to combine work activities and tasks with play and leisure activities. Okay? So actually I thought about for the nowadays in education, uh, just I saw some application on the phone where you can play some game with the quiz from the questions from the course, right? So I told my wife I have a good idea. This year I'm going to make some application for the students where they can play the game with answering the question, right? And they can get some reward. What do you think my wife said? Yes, that's a great idea. Or no, the students won't play the game because it's boring and they want to play Candy Crush. <laughs> what did she say? No. She says, what do you think? The students are not going to play that game. They don't care. It's going to be boring. It's useless, right? What do you guys think? Would you like a game application where you answer, what is a stakeholder? And get some, some points? 
riding a snake all with blah blah blah, and then you get 50 points. Yay, I got 50 points! You can celebrate on the boss. Hmm? Should I make that kind of application game, or you don't care? I think uh, it is useful. It's useful? Okay, I'll tell my wife she was wrong. <laughs> well, you have to play the game then, if I make the effort to make the application. Put in, just I have to enter the question and you can get some achievement, right? Do you think that can work in education? Games and games and studying can work together? Or not? Games help to study? Hmm? Do you think they could make educational League of Legends? <laughs> or StarCraft? <laughs> Huh? Educational one? No? With quest mathematical or science questions? Hmm? No, it's separate from education? For relaxing? Anyway, in the workplace we can create that kind of a, uh, environment, right? It also helps us to encourage the team, right? The team, if I play ping pong with somebody, makes a better team spirit in the workplace, okay? That kind of thing. Uh, so, we can try to promote the mutual stakeholder capabilities. So, the two steps are to help all stakeholders by understanding and meeting their claims, help mutual stakeholders by developing their capabilities. <coughs> okay, so these are the first two steps of the stakeholder management, or main two steps. So, let's take a break there for 10 minutes. <coughs>